compared to the previous report, then I think that in terms of the various uh, socio-ecological systems, the damage <coughs> is much more evident now with respect to biodiversity. Uh, the urgency of climate change and the need for action there is also much stronger now. Uh, information regarding the impacts on the oceans and the polar regions is also extremely strong in our report. And of course, the link with health, which has been brought in in all the chapters to the extent possible, is a major change in this report as compared to the previous report. Um, if I combine this with the comment of the, the question of the last uh, speaker on inequality, um, the Sustainable Development Goals requires us to leave no one behind. There was some debate at the beginning of the UNEP GEO process as to whether we should just focus on the environment and leave the equity components to other agencies of the UN. But it was very clear that because all goals on the SDGs are integrated, interlinked, um, and indivisible, we would have to take the equity component as well on board. And hence, in relation to each of the different socio-ecological systems, we've tried to look at, for example, who is responsible for causing the problem, whether it's in the north or in the south, uh, who is most affected by the impacts, but also we've looked at interesting data. For example, we have a statistic in our report which says, that 22% of the world's population looks after 80% of the world's biodiversity, and these are the indigenous people and local communities. So we have really tried to take into account, as far as possible, through the report, some of the equity dimensions, because we feel quite strongly that if you want to address environmental problems, we will need to do everything. Not only the technology needs to be updated, not only the policy makers need to take action, but we may have to look closely at our inequality worldwide and within countries and within cities in order to be able to address these environment and health issues in a systemic manner. Okay, thank you for those questions. <clears throat> nice easy ones. Um, human behavior issues of environment. We know pretty well what the problematic human behaviors are. We know it's the way we eat, it's the, no, it's the way we get around, it's the energy that we use to power ourselves, and it's what we put into our homes, and it's how we build our homes. And of course, the infrastructures that need to go with that. Two thirds of the infrastructure that will exist in 2050 has not yet been built and the way it is built will determine very greatly what kind of world we live in in 2050. There are signs that all those behaviours are under question. We have seen uh, movements to eat less meat. We have seen movements to travel less individually in private motor cars, movements towards sharing, movements towards greater public transport, movements towards greater active transport, we have seen uh, homes being built that are energy positive, so they generate more energy than they use over their lives because they have both renewable energies incorporated and they're very energy efficient. We know how to do these things. The people who do these things are as happy, healthy, and have as high well-being as the people who do not do these things. So that is the challenge, to universalize those kinds of behaviors. <coughs> Change from previous reports, there's much more policy. Previous reports didn't look in detail at policy, and I take that to be a sign, uh, given that governments specifically asked for that, I take that to be a sign that governments have got the message, and they now want to respond. On the basis of this report, there are lots of ideas as to how they can respond, and we know that in governments there are very many very intelligent civil servants who will help them to respond and there are populations that will push them to do that like some of the young people we saw on the stage with the launch earlier today. Those are the kinds of processes that again need to be universalized. A few shining examples are not enough and that brings me to the first question, where are the shining examples? And I'm not going to pick out any particular country because no country is yet doing enough. Some countries are doing more than others. Some countries have made more progress 
in some areas more than others, but all countries need to do more. And uh, when they look at this report, they will find things that speak to their condition and that enable them to do more. And I'm sure there will be many people in those countries who will be only too glad to help them. Thank you. Is the mic on to someone already? Please. Thank you.